What's um, up, Gaines Nation? <laughs> what's going on? No, sorry, I, I used to take it a sip and um Roman Roman's uh you know, aka Mr. Getting It Done, aka wearing the same color shirt as me, aka <laughs> his mustache is still not better than mine. Not not quite as big as Kai, but I'm working on it. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I've been. Yeah, just growing the mustache. I've been actually trimming and everything. So it's good. Hopefully, hopefully, I look somewhat nice. Yeah, I gotta take some lessons from you because, like, I don't think I do a good job of trimming it, and it always ends up getting like in the mouth. So I really do need to invest in that, like that Amish um, beard wax, and especially like when I eat eggs, it gets on these like wispy hairs here ah, yeah. um, from like the bottom of the mustache. The uh, what do you call this? The the handlebars. The handlebars. Yes. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean, so I did, I you know what, I did the Amish wax for a while, um, but I think I, I I think I got rid of that or I finished it, but um, I just actually just got unscented oil, um, some oil, and I just, it's like a little droplet, and I do like, like two of them, and then I just put them on both, like fingers, and I just like, I just like rub it in there, so it's like, it gets nice and soft too. So. Do you do like the keto thing where you like put like olive oil on it, and then when you get hungry, you're just like... No, you know what? I actually heat up some bacon, <laughs> bacon fat, and then like I, I rub the fat. So actually, it, it, it hardens a little bit. It's like so almost like a hairy lollipop. <laughs> it looks like you like old fashioned hairspray to it. <laughs> exactly. Starch. Yeah. Or like uh, I don't know if you're, uh, you ever see those like natural soaps that have like, um, I don't know if they do it on purpose, but they'll have like little like flowers in there. Um, you know, I'm talking about like the homemade bar soaps. Like, why do oh, they yeah, do we, that? We buy those. But why? But why? Those. So, what? When you when you're rubbing your body, and then all of a sudden the lavender falls off, and you're like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you taking candy. a shower? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I don't know why they do that. To be honest with you, maybe it's oh. just for aesthetics. Well, also update. Um, I in so I I followed through. I, I fell through the rabbit hole and, you know, I, not not the copy and foul people, but um, I did order some nice sandals because, you know, it's only 76 here and I could still wear sandals. <laughs> and um, instead of ordering Birkenstocks like every man and woman would, I actually ordered some pair off Amazon. That's like an off brand. And they are flipping amazing. I might look like I could split the Red Sea, but they're comfortable. They stay on my feet. And they're really nice. And I, yeah. you know, socks, no socks. It looks, it feels nice. That's awesome. Do you, do you get um, sandals? Do you do like the flip flops where like it kind of like splits your, your big toe, or do you get it with oh, just like actually, the band over the top? I actually, I actually got. So this is my first pair, but it's a, uh, it's actually a pair that has like, um, like straps, like two straps okay. with a bracket, like so you can like tighten it, loosen it. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Sweet. But, Very cool. Yeah. So I I've never. I've never really been able to get into those. Like, people used to love the ones with just like the one band, especially like if you're taking them like for the shower or something like that yeah. after like a game. Um, but people have like really nice leathery looking ones. I don't know. I I, I can see myself getting into that as I'm like kind of grooving into like the uh, the senior like part of my life, you know. I mean, which is like what uh, this year you're gonna be a senior? A couple of months away. Yeah, as soon as I hit thirty. Psh. It's well, all downhill you know, from there. And also, too, I just, uh, with the mustache, I just feel like kind of like a hipster. So, like, you know, I just, right. I'm going to start wearing stuff that I don't normally wear and just, you know, <laughs> just grow this mustache out and see what happens. Uh, but, Roman, episode 66, what the heck are we talking about, Mr. Getting It Done, Roman Long? So, um, I think we might have, like, a couple of things that we can bring to you um, that will be worthwhile and bring value to you folks. Uh, so, one thing that, uh, occurred to me I don't know if we've ever really given like some sort of structure to if let's say you're in between like two programs and you're not sure which one is like better than the other how you can like rate or compare those so we want to give you some skills um, some quick things to look for um, whether it like um, it it fulfills like the need we're going to specifically focus on resistance exercise training so picking things up putting them down um, so any type of um, either weight-bearing or non-weight-bearing, if it's like calisthenics. We're not really going to focus on aerobic endurance, um, at least for this episode. So like uh, running, biking, um, nothing along those lines. Um, no real like extreme sport training unless it is like calisthenic type stuff. 
um, which we'll, we'll maybe briefly touch upon. Um, the principles are still the same for that. Um, and then uh, one of the things that I know that Antoine wanted to cover is kind of like how to rate it itself. So you could even like rate the program. So even if it's like it's a program that you want to do, um, you might be able to like develop a, um, a system for rating it for like uh, potentially like comparing against another program in the future, or if you want to try and like make some changes, how you can like quote unquote rate the, the program to know like what things worked, what things didn't work, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's pretty nice, um, that, you know, over time too, um, you know, not, not only if you're a beginner or intermediate, um, that, you know, you could kind of go off like certain experiences or, um, programs to kind of move forward and grow your, uh, physical fitness as well. Um, and, and your, uh, knowledge within the game too. So over time, you're going to build that up and you're going to kind of figure it out because like, by now, Rome, by now, like Roman and I kind of know what programs do or don't work for us because we've been lifting for, let's just say subpar 10 years between the both of us and we'll put the average together, like serious lifting, like maybe subpar 10 years. And, you know, over the, over that course of the time, we, we've had to go through those challenges too, with either, um, finding that right program, rating it ourselves, giving feedback. Um, I know we've talked about it before, but feedback is a hell of a thing when it comes to lifting because, you know, as Roman says, he's a machine. He still also has feelings and please don't hurt his feelings. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had to throw it in there because I remember like one of our early episodes, uh, you're like kind of like talking like Mike Israel with about being a robot, like inputs, output, input, output. Yeah. So I had to bring it up. <laughs> sometimes I am like that. Sometimes I'm very much like, uh, like yesterday, for whatever reason, after work, I was kind of like, it was one of those days where it just like kicked my butt. I sat on the couch for a minute just to like recoup before I went to the gym. And I was just like, Oh man, it's like never hard for me to go to the gym, but it was, it was actually kind of like struggle, struggle city to go to the gym. I got, I got there. I got it done. Was um, that yesterday? Yesterday. Yeah. Dude, same here. How did you, I feel like we're on the same page. That was like yeah. me yesterday. I, uh, I got there and I was like doing flat press and Arnold press. Yeah. And like, you know, I just, I just wasn't feeling it. Like it yeah. just, there was like no connection and I just like, God, so I just lightened the weight and just kind of got a good pump, but yeah. I've been beating myself up, so I think, um, so I, I got, like, the mini vacation this week. I think I'm going to use it kind of as, like, a, a functional deload, or it's just going to be, like, a deload based off of, uh, you know, like, the conditions. Like, I'm going to be, like, at home with family, and, like, we have a gym in the basement, um, but I won't, I won't push it super hard just so I can give myself, like, a, I don't know, active recovery a couple of days, and then I'll get back at it when I, when I get back next week. Are you, uh, are you gonna, how long are you growing out that beard, buddy? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Maybe another, I mean, it looks like, pretty, it looks pretty six long. Months, I think that's the months? longest I think I've ever seen your facial hair. Oh yeah. I think this is the longest I've ever seen it before. It may have gone longer here before. Like it might've gone down to like here or something like that, but I've never really grown out the uh, sideburns way, which they don't look good at all. Like, you could mistake me for being like the uh, indigent, which is fine, you know. Do you have a? Uh, do you have Who's Irish you know? in your background? I do have some Irish. Okay, yeah. is, that, is this the red kind of? It kind of no. Yeah. Well, that and um, kind of like one of our good friends. Uh, I won't say the name out loud, but if you remember, he used to work with us directly on the team. But he always had the neck beard, and the, oh, okay, and yeah, like yeah. up here, it just like never like grew. Yeah. It must be a European yeah, thing because I can't really grow anything right here too. Yeah. It like yeah. starts here and it goes down, but like yeah. obviously you can't see anything right now because I just shaved today. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. I, it's always looked weird, but whatever. I'm rocking it. Rocking and rolling. We got how can our uh, games listeners rate their fitness programs, buddy? Yeah, so first off, I mean, so th- it, you're gonna you're gonna have to you're gonna have to look at di- different uh, features and different uh, qualities of the program. So, pretty much, how I see someone finding a program, right? It's either through the internet, through social media, because social media is such a big platform, and as well as maybe getting a coach or a trainer. So, coach or trainer meaning 
you can get an online coach, trainer online, or in person. So those three avenues are pretty much how we're first like being able to get the program. And second off, then you're going to kind of go over kind of like how like Roman and I will talk kind of like as because we, we were certified. Well, I was certified. I don't have a current standing certification, but yeah, (laughs) but, but but as like trainers, what you would want to do then is even if like, let's just say you're going to a trainer or a coach online or in person, and let's just say we're going that route. The first thing, you know, you, you, you both will discuss um, or you and your partner or whoever, you know, has helped training you bringing this program together are your goals. What goals do you have? Like Roma was saying, we're going to probably keep this to weight training. Um, so we're going to be either looking at either general health, bodybuilding, powerlifting, powerlifting, Olympic lifting. So then you're going to look at like what type of areas that you're going to do. I mean, you could look at CrossFit too, which is like a hybrid of powerlifting and Olympic lifting. Um, but you're going to look at those avenues first. And then, and then after that, you're going to build some certain steps and engagements after that to help you build that program. Or you might get a generator program that your printer might already have. Um, and also a side note, if you are looking for a program online, social media yourself, um, be cautious. Um, as we might have said before, when you're looking at programs, go flag get them and make success. Um, and if, if they get them and they're successful, that's good. But if they're not the same body type, same you know genotype, or same type of athlete, then you might experience a little bit uh, different outcomes. So the first two options or yeah. are feasible, um, but as Roman and I will tell you, maybe that's a good start point to get you on track if you're a beginner. But if you're intermediate, then you can kind of look at it and be like, well, maybe I don't need 30 sets of quads. Maybe I should only do 10. I already have a good set of pair of quads. I'm already strong in that area. Uh, I do a lot of hiking. So I'm going to cut the sets by 10 start there and then maybe move them up, up, up like each every other like three weeks four weeks to see how the volume equates to my recovery um yeah yeah definitely and there's some like practical applications um so like if if you're finding a program and it's like 30 or 40 sets per like workout maybe that's a little too much i think um this i believe i heard this um from like a reputable, reputable resource. Whatever, I'm just gonna throw the number out. I think like top level IFBB pro bodybuilders do like 21 sets per workout, which is still like a crap ton. Like if I do 21 sets, usually I'm pretty like, I'm pretty gassed, especially if it's something like legs. Like if you do like nine sets of quads, like seven sets of like hamstrings, and then like four to six sets of like calves, like you're right there. And you're going to be like, that's going to take you like an hour and a half to two hours, like minimum. Um, most people are probably only looking to dedicate like maybe an hour at a time. And like, you can get a lot done in an hour. Like if, if you like really like fitness, if you're like really getting into it and you want to do more, totally cool. Um, if you want to do a little under an hour, that's fine. Um, just understand like that you do, you do need to dedicate a considerable amount of time, especially if your goals are grow muscle get stronger, like feel better about like movement in general. Um, it, it will take time. Um, you do have to dedicate, um, you know, your, your most precious resource time towards, um, those pursuits. So one of the things you can look at is just like pra- like practicality. Like if it's 40 sets, that might be too much. Like, think about it. Like how long would it take you to do a set of push ups? Okay. If it's like 10 sets of push ups, it's like 10 sets of squats the um like air squats like you know let's say it's a very beginner program those might each take you like a minute a piece is there like zero rest well then you're just kind of like going from set to set to set to set so just like one giant set essentially um so those are some like practical considerations to consider for sure yeah yeah so um and also too like the time a time frame of the program too like roma was saying that is important because like maybe that's going to help or, you know, kind of shy you away from different programs. Because like, say if you are doing a powerlifting program and 
and I want to say that for weight uh, Olympic lifting too. Personally, I haven't done Olympic lifting, but I know it's a, a little bit more tedious, kind of like powerlifting, and it's a little bit more, um, you know, you're producing a lot of energy throughout the set, so it's a lot more rest. Um, so make sure you kind of figure that out too when you're rating your program is – Maybe, maybe, maybe you're a parent, maybe you have three kids, maybe you have two kids and maybe you just want to just like, you know, just have a nice body. Maybe you just, you don't want that dad bod, but you want like one of the, like the fitness dad bods. Um, and, and maybe you can only dedicate 45 minutes the most. So, you know, maybe, maybe powerlifting or Olympic lifting wouldn't be for you because the fact that, um, you would have to spend quality time into that lift. And when Roman and I are doing squats, bench, or deadlifts, because we talk mostly about powerlifting, like Roman, if Roman's, if Roman's benching four times a week, right? Four? Yeah. So if Roman's benching four times a week, if he's either doing, you know, higher reps or less reps, but heavier weight, you know, that could take 20 to 25 to even 30 minutes. So Roman hasn't done a single thing besides bench. And we're talking about the warm up the set and you know maybe taking the plates off and getting a little bit of cool down before your next thing so if if that's someone like you like say if you're a parent yeah, maybe if you're a student or maybe if you work you know maybe if you're a nurse right now or a doctor or someone in healthcare and you're just busy up the rear end of COVID patients because that's going on right now and you can't physically be in the gym for over an hour uh, so that's like another thing I wanted to go over a moment. So I don't know if you want to go like kind of step by step, but if you want to, yeah. Thing out, out. yeah. So an important consideration would be like your training status. So I just made some quick notes um, about it. So if you're under two years, I would consider yourself a beginner, like no matter what. And that's that's totally fine. We all have to start somewhere. Um, I, think, I think beginners might face like the most traps because you might want to like do like a 30 set program where it's like it's it's okay to like start on the lower end and then build up. So one of the things you want to look for is that the program has built in progressive overload. So what does that mean? That over time, so um, let's say like it's a 12 week program that from week one to week 12, that it's going to either be increasing sets, reps, volume, or any combination of the three. Um, so, um, you know, oh, wait, obviously. Um, so that that is like a major com uh, major component. Um, you're probably going to want to stay in like the 10 to 20 um, set range for all muscle groups, most of them starting at like the 10 set range. So we can say like back, shoulders, thighs, tries. You could either say legs to make it easy or you could go quads, hamstrings, calves. You know, you can make it super simple. Oh, pecs. Throw the pecs in there. Um, you, you can break it down. You can do like front delt, side delt, like rear delt. But if you're a beginner, make it as like simple as possible. So another thing that I would say is just like make it push. So like your push day is just going to be like chest, shoulders, tricep. Okay. Back. Uh, pull. It's going to be pull day. So back, buys. That's pretty much it. Traps. So your upper back. Uh, legs, everything legs. It's going to be your um, quads, your hamstrings, your um, calves, your glutes, lower back, you name it. Um, so you could run a three-day, you could look at a three-day program that's like push-pull legs, uh, something along those lines. Um, RP, Renaissance Periodization, Mike Isertel, he just covered a video about that. Um, head on over to their YouTube channel if you're interested in checking that out. So if you're under two years of training, um, there's like going to be a lot of marketing to you, which is great because, um, you know, as like a fitness industry, um, somebody that like, you know, hopes to work in the fitness industry at some point, like formally, not just, uh, you know, doing a podcast and like my mm -hmm. own, like, um, exercise thing. Um, we want you to get excited about like your program. We want you to get excited about your health, your fitness. Um, but unfortunately there are some people out there that will like make some rather poor recommendations. So if you see that like the volumes like, or the program's not really progressing, so it's not increasing in sets from weeks like one to 12, for example, in this hypothetical situation, um, or it's not um, increasing in, in repetitions, or um, they're not like pressing you to increase the volume, um, you know, that, that should cause you to like to pause because uh, a program 
so that you are progressing, getting closer to your goal. Let's say it is, um, you know, getting stronger at whatever it is, just getting stronger in general, then it has to build in progressive overload. It has to build in progression. It has to build in overload so that you can get to that, that end goal. I'd say anything that's shorter than four weeks might not be um, effective enough. It should probably be along like the six week, that's kind of like as short as it should be to see some progression up to like eight to 12 plus weeks. Um, anything over maybe like 16 weeks, maybe like you could have it because if it's 20 weeks, it could be 10 weeks. Like why, why does it have to be that long? You could totally just keep running it, especially if you love it. Like if you found like um, a body part split um, or some sort of like exercise regimen, like, oh man, I love doing like these pull-ups, these push-ups, and these like these air squats. Like I, I just, I love it. It's so much fun. I'm like always energized to like have like new personal records. Totally cool. Go with it. Yeah, and also with progression, Roman, do you think it it should raise aggression as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, I was just, <laughs> I'm just making sure because I felt like. I, I read somewhere uh, with fitness aggression or progression equals aggression. <laughs> uh, no, sorry, that, that is just a joke. It's okay. Yeah, it is. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> um, intermediate, I'd say you don't have as many like pitfalls as a beginner might fall into. So like beginner to intermediate, you're probably looking at like two to five years. You might be able to just add like a small like a small um, like pressing program. If you're looking to like increase your bench, for example, that'd be totally fine to add on to the program that you already have. I'd say between that time frame, especially if you're like really passionate about this, um, you should be able to like start to put together your own program and like what makes sense for yourself. Um, keeping in mind like your your recovery, building in that progressive overload, whether it's like increasing sets over time, increasing repetitions, increasing. Um, overall volume, so you're manipulating, you know, weights on the bar, whatever it is, sets, uh, or reps, etc. Um, and you should also, as time goes on, it should be become more difficult. So you should increase the intensity. I don't know if I mentioned that for beginners, but that's definitely a key factor for beginners. So if you see a program that's like three sets of eight to twelve, especially for a beginner, that's totally fine. You'll hear people on YouTube like ration on all the time that. I don't want to say they don't know what they're talking about, but like for a beginner, that's perfect because you give somebody something to shoot for. Like the person might not know what auto regulate means. You don't need to, it doesn't matter. But what's important is that like week one for that exercise, let's say it's a bench press. Um, let's say you're going to just bench press the bar for eight reps. Well, week two, it should probably be bench press the bar, same amount of sets for nine reps. Week three, bench press the bar, 10 sets, 11 sets, uh, a set, 11 reps, 12 reps on week, what is that, five? And then when you get 12 reps, you can jump um, back down to eight reps, but now you add some weight on the bar. Let's say you add like a five or um, you add like a 10 or something along those lines. That way you're building in that progression. You're getting stronger. You're able to do more reps, lift more weight, maybe add in some extra sets. And out of nowhere, you're going to be like, whoa, I got some pecs. Like, my like shoulders, my triceps are popping. Wow. Like I, I push that door open with like, with uh -huh. ease. Um, so like, I, I don't necessarily see any issues with like programs where it says eight to 12, but you want to keep in that mind, like progression, progress. Like, so if I start here at eight, I eventually want to work up to 12. Like that's a, that's a good way to think of it. So it's not necessarily wrong, especially for a beginner. That's honestly probably perfect because it gives you a target rep range to shoot for. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily rate as a bad program, but if you're an intermediate, if somebody is continually throwing like eight to 12, eight to 12, eight to 12, you could always ask them like, Hey, you know, I'm getting like 14, um, repetitions, like on this exercise, like, is that bad? No, it's not bad. Like, are you getting into like the range of like fatigue that you're looking for? So at, as an intermediate, you might be getting better at, um, like your, uh, rating of perceived exertion, RPE, or your um, RIR or reps in reserve. So you can tell like, okay, week one, I want to start with about like three reps in reserve. So usually on an AMRAP set, I can do 135 pounds by 10 reps. I'm going to stop shy at seven reps, as long as that feels like it's still at three reps in reserve. 
And then the next week, you're going to stop shy at like two reps in reserve. Week three, you're going to stop shy at one rep in reserve. And week four, you're going to make sure you have your, your buddy who's going to spot you. And you're going to go all the way to failure. And you find out, whoa, I got 12 reps. So that means when you start back um, the next um, progression of that, that same like program, you'll probably, if you're at three reps in reserve, you're probably going to be around that like eight to nine as opposed to seven now. So that's just something to keep in mind for intermediates. Um, eight to 12, like rep range isn't bad, but if you're hitting like 14, for example, like that's totally fair. That's totally fine. Um, if your goal is like muscle building and you're still within a relative range of failure, so about within five reps in reserve to failure, you still should see some um, pretty robust muscle uh, muscle building uh, growth and um, activity going on. That's very nice. Yeah, that's exactly, you know, sometimes Roman and I will do that too. Like, you know, like sometimes we'll pro like, cause most of the time right now we're programming for ourselves, but like if we write down something and let's just say RDLs, Russian, uh, uh, I mean Russian, Romanian deadlifts. And let's just say we do 135 and we're gonna try to do reps, you know, six to eight. And then for some reason you do 10, maybe 11, maybe next week you're just, you maybe you just raise that weight to 155, 185, and maybe you'll get to that desired six to eight reps because maybe Roman and I grow when we do Romanian deadlifts and it helps our deadlift and it helps that accessory movement and it gets us stronger in that six to eight rep range. So someone like someone, something like that is a little bit high you know, uh, kind of above the head slash like, you know, maybe you need to be training a little bit longer to understand that. And, and then Roman was talking about the RPE. So like, you know, like, let's just say 155 for, t we did 10 to 12 reps instead of six to eight. And it's like RPE, like four or five. Now we also know that we, we really didn't give too much effort to that. Like we were, we were just like lollygagging. Roman just wanted to show his glutes off to his partner and you know, we're, we're just, it's all fun and games, but see, the thing is in reality and joking aside, like we know next time, like, well, I'm maybe like, you know, I'm not doing deadlifts today. Deadlifts are not for a while. Maybe I could do like RPA, RPE six, seven and see how that feels and see if I can recover for when I can do deadlifts or even squats because sometimes like RDLs will kind of affect squats depending on your squat stance. But like, you know, digging in deeper what Roman was saying, that's pretty much like a good standpoint, what he's like a good base. And then like when you go further in, that's when you kind of get like, you know, more scientific. You kind of put your, your, uh, your, um, hint, not your uh, smart cap i'm trying to your get i don't know your uh fitness dunce cap, cap? Ma I, no not a dunce cap. <laughs> uh you know your your uh your fitness gains cap on and then you're like wow this is like a whole new world and everything and also too with the rating i i was thinking of this as you were talking but after you kind of have your your feet wet when it comes to working out and whatnot you can actually rate them um on maybe like a scale of one to five of effectiveness um, with the goals that you have and as well as what like area of, uh, sport you're doing. So maybe, maybe you do jump around from powerlifting to bodybuilding programs or Olympic lifting programs. Um, and let's just say you, you, you found like one bodybuilding program so effective where maybe, maybe you kind of shied away from it for a while and you went to a powerlifting one. And then when you go back and you're like, oh, wow, I recorded that program being wonderful. I, I don't really want to do strength right now. I'm going to do a lot of hypertrophy for, you know, let's just say two, three months. And you go back to that program. And that's what kind of we're getting at, too, because it's like overall, because like Roman and I also have. And that's why we also say notes are really important. Either write them down on your phone or jot them down on your hand or your computer, your tablet your notebook, whatever the case may be, because we can go back then now and be like, wow, I, I really did well on this and my shoulders are lagging. So let me throw in maybe like a bodybuilding day with my powerlifting split and see if how, if I could still press, um, overhead or bench well with trying to build my overall definition of my shoulders. So, yeah, uh, that's something absolutely. else I wanted to add to. That's a huge point. That's a, like a really big point. Um, yeah, 
yeah, big, big, big <laughs> point. Like we, <laughs> we, we've it. talked yeah. about like, <laughs> we've talked about like, you know, both of us really don't have a lot of great success with um, just like a straight barbell curl. We've tried it. Like it, it's a cool looking exercise. It just like doesn't work for us. Like in general, um, you're never going to know that, or you could forget and like, kind of like keep on like spinning the tire in the mud, um, so to speak. If you, you don't make like a note of it, uh, you know, uh, you should make like a mental note, but like writing it down on paper too. Like, oh, I, um, when I did squats, I, uh, I winded up, I, um, widened out my arm stance and that actually allowed me to like lock my lats in and feel more secure in my upper back when I was, um, when I was squatting, uh, you know, back squatting the other day, just little things like that, just to help keep you on target and help to build up that, that regimen of knowledge that you have. Um, you know, Antoine and I, we've been doing this for uh, close to like 20 years of like combined like time. So we probably made like a crap ton of mistakes in that period of time. And we've learned a lot along that time. So, um, we've learned a lot, we've grown a lot and we like continue to like, keep growing, keep learning. So, uh, we hope you can too someday folks. Yeah. Yeah. And the last thing too, what Roman said is perfect. Like keep trying them like maybe 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 you just never want to pay for a coach or a trainer just keep trying programs like you like i'll like i think that was like my first thing when it when i got serious about lifting like i would do the four week training splits or training programs like roma was mentioned earlier and i would just keep trying them like they're like hands down like i'd be like wow this one sucked like i, I need to try a different one wow this one actually worked and then it went from this one actually worked, but how can I make it better? How could I modify it? So that's that's pretty much where you're gonna get to, or you're even at. So when you when you look at a program, you're like, ah, eh, like, and and that's why um, that's why I, I continue to try to succeed with the uh the like the full body workouts because before, um, I know I know we're a little bit over time, but like just like before, like if you talked to me before we started this podcast, I'd tell you full body splits are stupid. I tell you, why would you do something and you, you can't get a pump or you, you can't get progress on it? But I've been doing it for 53 weeks now, you know, seri on a serious note, two months now, like in an actual gym. So the other 10 months were pretty much recovery and basement workouts. But like, you know, like because I wanted to see how it worked and I wanted to see it for a long period of time. And right now I'm progressing. And maybe, maybe by next year, this time, maybe I won't be talking about full body splits. You, we won't know. And I won't know because I, 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 we, we're still figuring it out. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just like maybe one key, like point there. Um, you could, you could have a program that like works really well that you keep on recycling for a while. It can get stale. It's okay to like, say like, okay, this isn't working for me now and just like table it. And then like jump into something else because it excites you. Like it's good to get excited about like yeah. a, a workout program. Like we want you to be excited because that's what's going to keep you coming back to the gym. That's going to, what's going to reinforce some of those like healthy, like habits of like, you know, being mindful about like the foods you consume, like the exercises you perform, like the relationships you have, like keeping your stress down, making sure you stay properly clean and um, high hygienated and getting that sleep. You know what I'm saying, Gaines Nation. Hygiene with your uh, bar of soap that <laughs> lavender falls right out. <laughs> that, that, make sure you pick up uh, some of that Amish wax for those beards out there, quarantine folks. Uh, gosh. Well, guys, thanks for watching. As always, uh, follow us on Instagram. Uh, go to both of our YouTube channels. If you haven't subscribed yet, please help us out and subscribe on YouTube. Um, we're on all audio and video platforms. Please let us know if you don't see us on any other platform that you would like to see us on. Um, we would love to try to push ourselves to get on there. Um, and, yeah, guys, we'll see you on that next one. Peace.